Chess Master All Rats. I'm here at Team 45 45 League to analyze a game uh, between Hellman and C Knight 3. This was played in the Team 45 45 League and was elected as Game of the Week for Week 2 of Team 56. And man, this game brings back a lot of memories and I will explain as we go. Also, N Fork has uh, written analysis of of this game and I haven't looked at it simply to not prejudice what he says with what I say maybe we'll agree maybe we'll disagree maybe I'll catch something he missed and maybe he'll catch something I missed but uh, that's alright you know we, you don't have to be perfect when you present a game uh, I've talked about this before I think too many uh, chess authors are trying to get their analysis 100% correct because if they make a, a little error in their analysis someone's gonna look for their 15 minutes in fame and and post something somewhere oh Grandmaster shoots and Potzer said uh, play 16 knight f3 and wins well what about Bishop c5 in response doesn't black win and uh, Whoever wrote that get like I say gets his 15 minutes of fame and and Grandmaster shoots and Potzer takes a hit and everyone says don't trust what anything he says well what if everything he else he says is 100% spot on you know this is ridiculous judgment and chess players are just too ego egotistical if I make a mistake so what uh, I play a chess game just like all of you do and if I make a mistake if if you, if you spot it you beat me good for you <laughs> so. Uh, too many chess authors have, uh, particularly today, have turned to using engines to find the, the best move. Baloney. Worst thing you can possibly do, turn an engine on and find out what the best move is. Because you're certainly not turning an engine on when you're playing your tournament game, right? Uh, okay, so uh, why do you want to ruin your analytical skills and... and uh, have the best move pointed at pointed out to you it, it it I've mentioned this before and I'm gonna say it again because I don't know who sees all my videos way back when I was in the eighth grade my future sister-in-law um, where I known her since second grade we were in or first grade we were in the math class and she wasn't too sharp on math and I was and she'd always ask me for the answers to the question I'd go, okay I tell her well she passed the class with a good grade but did she learn math no you she didn't so anyway um, Let's get to this and see what, what we can come up with. And as I said, this brings back a lot of memories. Uh, okay, Sicilian defense main line. And I, I've had some interesting discussions with Enfork about this. It's my philosophy that at the lower rating levels, and by lower rating level, I mean lower than mine, 2200, uh, I think it's best not to play main line book variations. And... Uh, this game provides a perfect example because of my experiences and and I'll get more on that now in fork believes it's good to play the main line openings because that teaches you uh, how to handle the positions you're gonna get get against strong players well he's right I'm right too he's right for high rated players these are low rated lower rated players and I'm not saying uh, they're they're weak players it's all relative I, I'm chicken feed to uh, uh, got a Komsky or, or Vichy you know they'll just chew me alive <laughs> right okay and then uh, Bobby Fisher for instance when he was upcoming and, and as a teenager he, he knew openings very very well he was some somewhat limited on some of them he had trouble against the Carol Khan uh, but uh, uh, he was able to know his openings very 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 well so there's something to be said for knowing openings but then again how many of us are Bobby Fisher? Uh, case closed, okay? So, I think that black is better suited, if you're going to play a Sicilian defense, to getting into one of the lesser played lines that your opponent's not going to know. Because, uh, as I'll explain, this follows what we call main line. Now, main line means it's played all the time. So, the, 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 the novice player or the player trying to learn it is say, well, everyone's playing it. I should play it. Well, why? Just because everyone else is playing it doesn't mean it's good? Well, probably. They found pretty much found the best moves. But here's the drawback. You play a main line, you're going to have to know a lot of side variations. A lot of them. And if you don't know them, you're, and if your opponent does, 
you're going to walk into something you can't handle. Uh, mainly, a, a, a repetition of a game somebody already won quickly, and it's going to happen against you. Okay, if you don't know these lines, because a booked up player who spends invests hours and hours into these positions is probably going to know it better than you. I found this out the hard way, as I will explain. We will see. Okay, let's let's move forward a little bit. Okay, this is what we call the Nidorf variation, popularized by Argentinian grandmaster uh, Miguel Nidorf. He, uh, originally, I think he was from Poland, and he um, got residency in Argentina when the Second World War broke out. Okay, well, anyway, a little history lesson. Bobby Fischer made it very popular in the uh, in the late 50s. He he understood the theory, but. Uh, and, and it's remained popular. It was very, very popular in the 70s. I used to have a book about, I can't remember the title, about the Nidor variation. I think it was published by Pergamon Press and oh man, I, I digested that thing from cover to cover back in the 70s when I took up the Sicilian defense. My, my results as black uh, improved when I took up the Sicilian defense because it's a very, very versatile opening. Uh, unfortunately, the drawback was if my opponent knew it better than I did, uh, I was in a, in a world of trouble. And we will see. I'll explain more as we go on. And so far, this all follows, you know, what they say, book line, main line. And Black has other ways to diverge from this. Uh, going to a poison pond, that's all pretty much beyond the scope of this video, but this still follows main line. And as I say, I was studying this in the late 70s. And uh, at this point, uh, the old theory, there were two moves, g4 and bishop d3. And uh, the bishop d3 line is beyond the scope of this video. But at one time, I knew how to play that very, very well as black. And I, I pretty much knew how to play against g4 very well as black because, uh, I, like I said, I invested hours into this. And b5. And let's see. I think there was, I think it's this point, I have to remember, there was a game in the Nidorf, uh, Nidorf book and it was between Bayon, that's B-E-L-L-O-N, versus Portish in uh, 1978, 77, something like that. Um, it could have been this move or last move. I think it was last move. Uh, Bayon played a3. And what happened, Portis played rook b8 and was able to generate all this counterplay against the white king. And white still got his kingside attack, but, but uh, Portis defended it and eventually won. So, unfortunately, nobody would play, when I played this defense as black, nobody would play Bayon's A3 against me. They always played the, the, the sharper moves. And, uh, and here they come, G5, and this is all still theory. And here comes the, uh, the pawn sacrifice. Uh, white is offering a pawn. And I've had this position at least twice that I can think of as black. And I gave it up after the second game. I, I just I, I couldn't stand it anymore. Uh, I did spend some time. I know a lot of people were playing knight c5. And even today, I know people that specialize uh, in this opening. And, and uh, they're weaker players than I am. But I would not allow this position against them. Or, I mean, I would not play this position as black against them. Simply because they know it. Like the back of their hand. Why do I want to walk into somebody's... Uh, uh, prepared analysis, unless I want to invest uh, 50, 100, 200, 300 hours researching this, I've got better uses for my time, thank you. And that's the whole point of uh, the way I teach chess. Stay out of the book. Uh, stay away. Get into something you're comfortable with and not something that everybody's playing. Again, just because the grandmasters are playing it doesn't mean you have to play it. Show me where it says you have to uh, play this position as black against the Nidorf uh, or with the Nidorf. No, you don't. You can get out of the Nidorf very, very easily. And maybe I'll offer something at the end. Um, but uh, I, I had this position, as I said, twice as black, and twice I captured that pawn on g5, exactly what black does. And it looks good. You know, you're, you're picking up a pawn, but white's going to get it back. 
and there's nothing you can do about it. Now I'm going to show you the draw, the whole drawbacks with this whole setup. I think White has close to a winning position. Uh, not that Black can't find the right moves. I'm sure the right moves exist if you want to dig through hundreds of games of theory. But all the chances lie with White here. Why? Why is Black? Would you want to play an opening that White has all the chances? Fooey, you know. Uh, Case closed. Okay. And I don't remember all the book lines. Uh, you know, it's been years since I studied this. You know, we're talking 34 years since I last played this. Uh, or, or close to it. And uh, the two games I lost with it, uh, one was in 70, 78, and I was in an under 2000 section. I'd already beaten the number one and number two seeds. And I was three and a half half, then lost round five to a very strong player. And then in the last round, I just got killed uh, trying this, knocked myself out of any small amount of prize money. Then uh, a year later, in 79, the story is uh, the, in the United States Chess Federation, wh whoever was doing the computerized ratings for the uh, Chess Federation, you know, computers aren't weren't that big of a thing back then. Whoever it was, we lost the contract or they went out of business. I don't remember. But ratings were frozen for about 10 months. <laughs> okay, you couldn't get an updated rating for a long time. And I happened to pick this period of, in my life to improve at chess. And my published rating was 1860. And my unpublished rating, when they finally caught up, was 2050. And I was taking advantage of that, playing in it anywhere I could, whether it's under 2000 price. I, I did quite well. Uh, anyway, I went back east to to uh, Washington D.C. to play in the what was it, the Atlantic Open? Yeah, one of the old Goldsburg CCA events. I think it still runs. I flew all the way back there, thinking I could go win the under 2,000 prize, and I ran into this in round one as black, and and I got slaughtered, and never recovered. So so much for my uh, winning money on the East Coast. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Uh, let's uh, end of uh, kind of the, my little little uh, stories here, and there's some other uh, plans here. Essentially, what's going to happen here is White has a tailor-made attack against the Black King if he castles. Okay, uh, sometimes this Queen goes to e2. I think that's what was played against me, and then the pawn, the h4 pawn, just runs up the board and. Uh, files started getting opened up, and I got, like I say, I got slaughtered twice uh, trying to trying to win this position. And here's the other drawback with this whole thing: this knight on d5 is a permanent pest. Uh, Black's in trouble because of that knight. Uh, that's the perfect outpost. It's controlling uh, so many squares in the Black camp. Now, you could argue and say the Black Knight on e5 is uh, just as good. Well, it's nowhere close. It's not even on the fifth rank. It, it's, it's got an outpost, too. It can't be driven away by a pawn. But that Knight's really not helping Black. And what happens now is uh, Black's playing Queen d8. And, you know, we're still in the book. So let's think about this for a second. This is still a book position that... Uh, that uh, black is supposedly close to equal in, but in practice, practice, how can black hope to to do anything here without any development? Okay, uh, he had his queen developed. Now it's gone back. The black king is not castled. The queen rook and the queen bishop are sitting at home, and uh, white's uh, got this wonderful knight on d5. Now the queen needs to to be covered. It was hanging, but. Um, not really hanging because the white queen was or the black queen was under attack, so white deals with queen h3, and as I say, in some cases I think the queen comes back to e2 and and this pawn runs. I know in one game, uh, when my queen got tempoed, I put it on b7, and there it sat for the whole game, and I think it either never moved again or by the time it moved, I was hopelessly lost. So. Uh, D eight's a little better, but it, it, it's not much better because uh, you're undeveloping. So White's White's doing quite well here. Okay, and I believe uh, I did look a little bit at the book here, and 
I believe this is where whites or blacks getting in trouble. What he needed to do uh, in this position was castle, but uh, White's got everything he wants here. He's got, like I say, he's got a tailor-made attack against the uh, against the black king, and and where's where's the black counterattack against the white king? Well, it's not there. And without this a3 to stop b4 to kick the knight, uh, there are no weaknesses in the uh, white pawn structure in front of the king, so it's going to take even longer for for black to open things up. So, um, I mean, what can I say? Uh, but castling. Uh, again, this is beyond the scope of this video to show all the poten all the possibilities to to carry on. But uh, you know, White's just so well posted here. Uh, the queen can redeploy to e3 or h6, and if even it get, goes to h6 and gets kicked, it can come back to e3 probably. This h pawn is going to run. Uh, it's just it's just a mess for black black has no really no winning chances he's playing survival chess here and hoping uh white doesn't know what to do well anyway um let's get to the main line uh white uh black plays bishop b7 which seems to lose now let's look look back at the clock for a second uh basically both sides are playing with their increment they're they're taking a little bit of time but they're not taking a heck of a lot of time so it, again, it's one of the dangers of playing one of these openings. If you don't know it, you're going to hit disaster. And really, if you're going to play this opening, you need to spend um, hours. And you have to be prepared and know what to do in this position. As I said earlier, if you don't know what's going on, one slip, you're gone. Okay? It, it's that simple. Uh, I... For how Black saves this position, I, I, like I say, it's beyond the scope of this video. I know the correct move is to castle. And to say what would happen after that, again, that's going to go uh, well beyond uh, what I can present in this video. Uh, I'm just basically going to say this uh, game is a reason why you do not want to play this variation of the Sicilian defense or anything uh, too much in theory. Uh, where you're... If, because when your opponent knows it better than you do, uh, you're in trouble, okay? You're going to lose. And it's much better to play something a little off kilter. We'll, like I said, we'll come back and cover that at the very end and uh, make it a game of you versus him. You know, now, Black's outrated here, but that's, that's okay. They can, these ups, upsets happen, and Black would be better served to get that upset if he's not playing into a tailor-made uh uh, white position. Anyway, here comes the check. Now, nobody wants to take with the king. I do know there's some book lines where where black does take with the king, but trying to find those would be just a waste of time. But now, white's just, look at this. Queen penetrates in with check. Um, there's a threat on this bishop now. Uh, what's poor, uh, poor black to do? Well, he's got to bring his bishop back. And white just starts having good moves because look how look how crushing the white game is. The queen and two knights are just infesting uh, the black position. The, the king's caught in the center. My goodness, you know, check. There's a pin now. Guess what? You can't castle. And then white finds an, a nice uh, combination here. Uh, you might want to pause the video see if you can find it. Okay, you resumed it. He takes this pawn with check and. Uh, you'll see the the whole point. There's now white white has collected a second pawn for the piece. He's attacking a rook and he's threatening to bring this knight in. Oops, that's the pawn. Threatening to bring this knight into e6 and win the queen. So black's lost. It's that simple. So black saves the queen but loses the rook, and white's winning and. Now, I didn't make a notice of the clock, but all of a sudden, look how Black's clock has ticked way down. So all of a sudden, he realizes he's in trouble. Okay, so he he spent 10 min minutes, over 10 minutes, because he got the increment. He spent 10 minutes on that move. Let's back it up again. And he spent 12 minutes on this move. Um, let's see. He moved kind of quick here. So wouldn't Black have been better to spend 12 minutes on this move instead of only uh, only five minutes? I, I 
I, I case closed. You know, you. And again, if you don't if you don't spend your time, you you run the risk. Could Black have saved the game if he'd spent ten minutes and castled? Who knows? White still has, uh, like I say, this tailor made a pos position to attack the Black King. Uh, Black's in trouble. It's just that simple because this this position is so powerful. I mean, I ran into it twice when I was arguably uh, the first time in 1978. I was. Uh, approaching 2,000 strength and as I said I beat the, the, the top two seeds in this under under 2,000 section and in 1979 when I lost again I was unpublished 2,050 so uh, and I, I couldn't do a thing and my opponents were probably oh, 2,000 strength themselves but still I, I just had no prayer okay so let's go forward now Black's having to take his time and, you know, too little too late. You know, he's just busted. Uh, White's up um, a rook for a, a bishop plus has a couple extra pawns. So really most of the game requires no comment, although there will be some here in a bit. I'm just going to kind of run through and not bore you to death because there's really not much happening here. Uh, I think White played it very well from, from the whole game. And uh, it's not White's fault that black played into this line and you have to tip your hat to white for being prepared but uh, but there's no excuse for uh, for for in my opinion for for playing a, a book line that you don't know uh, and I thought I knew it when I played it but I found out I didn't practice said otherwise so white's just busy attacking pieces and trading them off and black doesn't resign you know you never uh you never win by resigning that's an old saying now the point uh nice move nice move on black's part if uh white gets greedy black gets a draw you know got to watch for these things how many times could somebody get greedy and whoops uh stalemate okay so nice try by black but white smells a rat and here white missed a better move uh what would you do here i would play queen takes because nothing's defending that rook this queen is pinned and maybe he saw it and said but he stalemated it again well so what um we don't have we don't have to take his queen um we take it next move you know anyway maybe it doesn't really matter but I guess just the way I would do something, do things. But it doesn't matter. Rook takes is fine. You're still getting the rook next move. Whoops. And black heroically uh, plays on. And white just says, phooey, I know how to mate this position. Well, what's he doing? He, he has mate in two. Oh, well. I guess he wants another queen. Now he finally says, phooey. Uh, what I would do is start promoting pawn to, pawns to knights. I have a game in my library where I had four knights. Guy wouldn't resign, and he had annoyed me in another game. And and uh, uh, when I got to play him again, I he wouldn't resign. And I promoted four pawns to knights. Knights do such fun things uh, against the king. Oh man, they're powerful. Okay, you just put them in a box, and you move the like. Here, I'll just draw it. You get him in a box, and then you just move the box up the board. This knight goes here, and this knight goes there, and so forth. You know, just along that line. They just you just move that box up, and they just kill kill the king. Okay, anyway, <laughs> checkmate. Okay, let's uh, back up. And I said I would say before I get to end folks' comments. Uh, I said I would say what what else can Black do here? Well. Um, you don't have to play d6. Um, oh, by the way, black can still play the dragon, and that's another overanalyzed opening. Um, you can get in run into the same problems there. If you know it, you're fine, but you got to spend time. Uh, I think it's better to study other uh, facets of chess and stay out of the main lines. But uh, uh, let's see. Just make a suggestion. The interesting moves are like night here and this the ideas behind this are beyond the scope of the video uh, 
black can even go into a a Paulson style, assuming white will not make a close Sicilian out of it. And then you play a6, and the point is that you have provided a haven for the queen on c7. This, again, white can know this, but you're not running into a lot of the problems that you run into with that uh, we just saw in that mainline knight orf. And black enjoys all the ad advantages that the Sicilian defense offers. Um, you know, white, white's not without chances, but uh, black's not going to get blown off the board to prepare to analysis, okay? All right, so uh, that's just a couple ideas. Without further ado, let me bring up uh, Infork's comments here, and I'll just read them. Let's see, if if I paste them, they don't always post. It's kind of a nuisance to paste them. I found out the last time. I'll just read them this time. Okay, um, this game was Sicilian Night Art Variation that is very popular nowadays. Okay, my comment now, it, it kind of went in and out of fashion. Uh, I guess it's back again, so you got to even know it more. Okay, end of my comment. As, as well as most effective weapon for black on top level. Okay, my words, keyword top level. Um, we're not grandmasters. We're not top level. It asks a lot of memorization, and that is one problem for average league player, including myself, because it's especially risky for black who has a more developed army. Often, night or t often in night or if one slip from black may cost the whole point, but for white things are less dangerous, although the variation offers totally equal chances for both sides. Yeah, that's this, my comment. Yeah, that's true, but you got to know the, know the chances. Uh, that's a lot of work. Black chose often played line, but it seemed to favor white more than... Uh, where's the rest of the... Maybe I'll just bring this over here and watch him scroll. See, I've got it here. Okay, seem to favor black more than... Fooey. Okay. Seem to favor white more than... Best, okay, best lines of this variation. The game started very sharp line. On the end of opening, Black has a chance to castle, but he rather developed his bishop on c8, and White's army find quite direct attack on vulnerable king. It seemed White knew this line a bit more than Black and managed to save his time as well. White found nice attacking moves and finally won the game. Okay, so we're in pretty much in agreement there. Okay, in his next comment, I have to admit, it was quite easy to win the game as white because black king stayed in the center and, and didn't play the best moves in this sharp and risky line. But on the other hand, when someone plays in under 1800 with not much mistakes, it's very well played and would be the same even for national master or feeding master. I'm not staring just the amount of mistakes because I would mostly vote under 2200 games. I'll write something about this game if I found something to add. Okay, we did. Um, some further explanations about my choice for Game of the Week, Hellman's game. Something about the theory about Nader. I know the game followed a common theory, but at least my database, uh, White have won many more games than Black. Okay, my comment. Yeah, that seems to indicate, as I said, from my own practice experience, practical experience over 30 years ago, white was winning all the time. <laughs> I was the victim. Okay. Uh, more than black, and he seems to have a nice attack on the king side as well. Okay, so we're in agreement on that. Because Night Earth is such a popular opening, let me see some other possible lines for black. And he recommends, let's let's get the position, 8, queen, c7. Okay. Uh, getting the main line here. Okay. Uh, He's saying h6. Yeah, that's another line uh, it beyond the scope of this, this video is to, to try to explain this line. Uh, I'll give the moves that Enfork does. Uh, you can research this on your own. I'll just play the moves. Again, This I, I'm looking at this for the first time, so I, I, uh, unrehearsed is the best. Because when you're actually playing, everything's unrehearsed. You know, what you, you go in there with what you know and what you can see. So uh, uh, our fresh raw approach, uh, I think, is the best method 
uh, of instruction because that's how we're all playing. You know, again, going back to my opening statements, you don't need to sit here and present absolute perfect analysis uh, and what the computer says on all these things. Fooey, fooey, fooey. You got to learn to analyze. So here's some analysis. Okay, he suggests this is just like I sometimes will create a line. Bishop h4. I got to get this back. Um, Knight bd7, bishop e2. This is just a, a, a book line that uh, he recommends. You'd have to do some research. Uh, g4, b5. g5, so similar in some respects. b4, knight b1. Wait, what's this knight hanging? Did I miss something? Um, Okay. Oh, yeah. Here, I did miss something. Let me back it up. Okay, you take here first. Now the bishop's taking. Now b4, knight b1, bishop b7. Okay, so this is in Fork's line. Knight b1, bishop b7. And he says here, uh, g4 is, of course, the wrong idea in this line. I just want to show that black gets comfortable position, some counterattack on the other side, while white doesn't have as nasty attack like in the game. And Yeah, I will agree with that assessment. And again, it's not a force line. Uh, it just shows what black can do if, if white tries to follow um, the book, you know, the book plan. So sometimes when your opponent this could be a case if black knew this line. White white knows the G4 line and wants to force it in. And as, and as a result, if black is a little more prepared, black can play this line. Uh, this could very well be true. But this is only one line of many. And as I say, if you want to play this position, be prepared to know it. And I frankly choose not to. I'll, I'll go play something else if I want to play a Sicilian defense, just like I said and get the game more along the lines of my mind versus your mind. Yeah, the game's going to be equal, uh, but isn't every position when you start equal? Nobody wins until somebody makes a mistake, but let's not give White a tailor-made uh, uh, win. Okay, so let's see. Um, let's back it up. He gives another option here. Let's see. Let me see. Do I make see which line he's in? Because he's talking about a twelfth move, queen g three. Maybe it's in the line that uh, that I just had. So let's see. Let's back this up a little bit. I'm gonna back it up on the position. Because I want to get Enforce comments in here. Okay. So he's suggesting. Um, after castles, h6, bishop h, wait, h6. After castles, you don't play knight bd7. You play here first, then here, now knight bd7. Okay, and then he's saying uh, bishop e2, castles. Whoops, didn't go far enough. Castles. Now he's saying uh, if t instead of 12 g4, if white plays queen g3, then uh, um, let me find it here. Uh, black plays knight c5, and and then his comment is black gets some play on the center. And I don't see so strong attack moves for white, so it's pretty even. Also, comfort, also comfortable for black. And I, yeah, I would agree with this. Uh, black didn't have to undevelop his queen. White doesn't have this powerful outpost uh, for his knight. Black's able to keep a pawn on e6. So this this line is just asking for trouble. You know, this whole line. Uh, and I couldn't solve it in the in the 70s, and nobody solved it since. So this bishop g5 line is just bad. Okay, let's bring uh, his comments back here. More about the actual game. 
maybe it seems bold, but 1300 to 0, let's see, is the right idea for black. Let's see. Let's get into the main line. Um, I don't know. I don't know if that's book or not. Um, look, you guys will have to look it up. Let's see. He's he's suggesting. Maybe it seems bold, but he's putting a slam on it. Castles is the right idea for black. The idea is to activate the pieces as efficiently as possible. The position is even, and not that ra not that risky for black. It seems okay. So I've learned something. As I said, um, the main lines were. Uh, bishop takes g5 and knight c5. Uh, I don't know about castles. I mean, I did look a little bit uh, up just to remind myself what the main lines were. Uh, I don't know. It, it's it's worth looking at. Uh, maybe black can survive this. Uh, again, if you're going to play this, you have to know it. But I don't know. Let's see. e6 is a little frisky here, but there's a discovery on the queen. Let's see. I don't know. Let's see. We're... Suppose we bring the queen over here. Well, then we're on this twice, but then black def defends it. Uh, interesting. I don't know what's happening here. Looks like maybe M. Fork is correct with his assessment. Is it in the book? Are, are there games from here? At least those give you an example. And, you know, who knows? Maybe, maybe this pawn can... Uh, can be captured now. If you're gonna if you're gonna play this line, you got to look these things up, because chances are these things this has been played so many hundreds of times. Someone has tried these ideas, and if they haven't, then you test them, and uh, you you analyze them out yourself, and see what what happens here. So anyway, uh, what else does he have to say? He still got some more comments here. So castles is the right side. Let me bring this back over. Castles is the right idea for black. The idea is to activate the pieces. Like I said, that the position is even not that risky for black. It seems there is no clear move how to break black's position. For example, f6 pawn sack would active act, uh, activate. I guess it means the bishop on e7. So let's back that up to castles. Uh, he's suggesting f6 would activate this bishop. You know, yeah, he's right. Uh, uh, it the 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 black king is a little exposed, but this, as he's, he's noting, this bishop is activated. Uh, it's a little tied down. It's it's guarded by this knight. Uh, a lot of people might be unwilling to defend uh, against. Um, this open with this open file directly against the king, uh, I don't know. It, it's something to analyze. If you're gonna, if you're going to play this line, you need to know it. it it's that simple. It, it, this was only one line of many, and that's the problem with these, uh, or the advantage of these uh, of these book lines. If you, if you have time to invest and cover every line, you know, go for it. I, like I say, I discourage it because I think you're better studying other facets of your game and saving your time. Um, of course, black also has the option of taking with the knight, but I don't know. Uh, is is this king safe? He, he probably is. You know, we go threat and mate, and, and I chase you out of there. Goodbye. Goodbye, queen. Get out of here. You're not going to mate me. Okay, so... Uh, he's got. He's definitely got some interesting comments. And again, if uh, it's not for me to sit here and show you, how do you get better? You will learn yourself. I, my whole concept of what I, how I teach is I teach you how to teach yourself. I can't show you everything. It goes back to my uh, sister-in-law, future sister-in-law in the eighth grade. I showed her the answers. Uh, <laughs> she didn't learn. It's it's your job to to, to sort these things out. Uh, you don't need someone to sit here and show you all the answers. You know, you've got to analyze. Uh, especially if you're playing these lines. This is, and you can pick up points here with white or black if you know these lines. So N fork is right. Uh, I, I say it, it, at, your level, at the lower levels, it's not all that important. It, but at the higher levels, he's definitely right. Okay, let's see. So what else do we have here? Um, 
There's no clear move how to break planks, for example, the f6 pawn, so let me bring this back over. The f6 pawn sack would activate the bishop e7, which will both attack on white's king on new diagonal while defending. So I guess he doesn't intend to take back on f6 with the pawn. Okay, what else? Uh, black king is on the best place near the corner, as we saw from the game and what I said above. Okay, yeah, he definitely would have been better in the corner than caught in the center. Black will use the f file. And that will compensate if white trades f5 takes e6. Yeah, I, I mentioned that. Uh, you know, I showed a possibility. What if if uh, if white takes? Uh, it's black that's going to be on the f file because he has to do that to defend his e6 weakness. Okay, so we're in pretty good agreement here. Um, okay, let's see. Keeping the previous things on mind. 18. O to O castles was the last chance for black to save the game. Okay, uh, let's get to the main line and see where was move 18. It's coming. Yeah, here it is. So we're we're in agreement there. Uh, castling was the last chance to save the game, and it's just we both said things pretty much the same here. We're pretty good agreement. The position is quite even after this move. And yes, Enfork is right. The position is quite even after this move. But the the fly in the ointment is, uh, in practice, White does very well. I mentioned it, and even he mentioned it. The, according to the databases, uh, White does very well here. Uh, to If you give this position to uh, a grandmaster, uh, he, he's probably going to beat an international master with black hair, but maybe not. Maybe the international master knows the theory and, and, and is handed enough uh, uh, of a solid position that, you know, he he may end up having to fight for the draw, but he, he just may very well get it, simply because White just got such a tremendous game. Okay, back to what he says. Let's see. Did I finish that? Oh, I've got to bring this over here where you can see him. Okay. Um... Uh, okay, knight h7 was efficient. Sack white sees the fork with knight e6 and builds the and builds the double threat. Take queen with rook and threat of take taking the queen on d8. Exactly as they said. The ending went without need of further improvements. Yeah. In a nutshell, as black, I would play like on the game, but he would play 13 castles. Okay. Hey, look. Enfork is active in the league. Here's your challenge. Prepare this, play this line against him and meet his castles and and see who can prepare the better, uh, the better variation. Uh, I, I, I might play him. I, I'll take you up on it. <laughs> I'm not saying when I'm going to play you, but somebody needs to play this against him. Okay, he's announced what he's going to play, so the dare's on him. Okay, uh, study that. You got to... Um, just imagine yourself in this position. Let's back it up. Let's get to the right point. Okay, so here's here's the big challenge. Okay, sometimes they run thematic tournaments at ICC and a few other places. Uh, this could certainly be an interesting uh, thematic event. But here you're saying, uh, let's see, F5. Wait, yeah, F5. In Fork saying he'll play this. Okay, so. Aside from what's in the book, hold off looking in the book. Hold off look. Definitely don't look and see how the computer evaluates it before you look at it, look it up and analyze it yourself. But um, Infork is saying he'll take back here, okay, he, uh, and try his luck with you. So see what you can come up with. Uh, next time you play him, play this line, and if if you can out prepare him, if 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 Castles is bad. Uh, or you can find a good strategy. Guess what? You got great chances to beat him, right? Absolutely. Doesn't matter what your rating is. If you know this position better than he, it it, it just backs up what I said about this opening. Why you don't want to play it? Because you have to know it like the back of your hand. Well, here's your chance. Uh, you know, Enfork said he'll play it, <laughs> or maybe he didn't mean it, but I'm kind of daring him. You gonna play it? And no, I don't have time to set up a game with you or even prepare against it. So I'm not chickening out. I don't have time. I, I, I'm, <laughs> but somebody's got to have time. Uh, here's your chance. 
Uh, Enfork is very, very strong. I don't know if he got his FIDE Master title yet or not. He was uh, wiping out strong players last time, time we really sat down and, and chatted online. I mean, he's a great, great player. He's a good friend. I'm happy to have met him here. <laughs> and you're lucky to have him uh, offering these insights. I mean, the, the league is all the richer for, for what he's contributing. And for, thankfully, we're both spot on. We're in agreement and harmony with each other on this stuff. But, uh, I mean, I would I would have to think black should feel or white should feel confident about playing this. You know, it's, uh, theory is still saying white's solid. you got an even game. You're not getting a bad game. If you, get, if you lose this game as white, it's because you, you blunder. But White still has some attacking chances. So Enfork has said he would play this. Now it's up to you guys to uh, prepare this and play him. So what else does he have here? You would play this game, go for Castle, or or, or we didn't see this close, or change the track game with H6 earlier. Previous comment. So maybe it's not going to be that easy. The idea of H6 is to chase the Bishop H4 with G5 later on if needed. I'll say something about that. Many GMs have played the same as C Knight 3 is black, but they have lost lots of games. Yeah, they have. <laughs> I lost lot two games. That was enough. Okay, lost lots of games, and that's why I think it's not the best for black. Okay, so we're in agreement. This is this line. Ugh. Uh, I learned the hard way 35 years ago. Well, not quite a lot that long, but close. Okay, so uh, M4 would, might try H6. So, you know, to be fair, he, if he if he finds a flaw in castling, he's not going to play it. But he's going to. But you got to be ready for H6. So we'll give him an out. We're not forcing him to play H6 because I didn't read his whole statement. But who knows? Um, I don't know. Uh, I hope he gets to play this this line against one of you. Uh, it should be an interesting game. Uh, and that's how you get better at chess. You look at this position and and try and solve things. And I have, uh, there's so many examples of somebody spending hours and hours tearing someone's game apart that they're going to play and finding a flaw in their analysis. Well, good for them. You know, you find a flaw in my analysis, you're going to beat me if I play my line. Whoops. And uh, what can I say? But back to the players. Uh, both sides can hold their heads high here. Uh, Hellman, you played great. C knight three. Uh, you you did know the opening pretty well, but you unfortunately just like me because I've lost with this too. You just didn't know it well enough. All right, so don't worry about that. Um, switch to another line or dig in, but you're gonna have to take some of the end forks or my suggestions. Either get out of this thing entirely early or uh, study the lines that Enfort gave. Well, anyway, uh, this was a very entertaining game again. And for those of you that are watching this, uh, this is all completely unrehearsed. Uh, I just turn a video on, turn the video recorder on, and, and start blabbing. And uh, uh, I really enjoyed looking at this game. It's it's, And I really enjoyed making this video. And any comments you... Uh, fine people have or be greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for taking the time to look at it and I'll see you soon with the game of the week uh, winner for game three. Alright, take care. Bye.